Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in, and one of the main catalysts for the housing market crash, which is new construction, is absolutely melting down. And it's finally time to start talking about the overwhelming cancellation rate that's happening right now with all things new construction. So we're gonna dig in today, guys, and really explore deep dive to a Fortune article that's really gonna let us know the true problem of what's happening in new construction. And if you're a buyer on the sidelines or an investor waiting for the deal of your dreams, I believe it's going to be especially important to keep your eyes on new construction because, again, on top of unaffordability, prices in the rental market, I believe that new construction inventory and price drops is going to be one of the leading catalysts moving forward into 2023. And the fact that over 60% of home buyers canceled their contract with KB is a huge sign of things to come in the new home market. It will be an absolute bloodbath in 2023 and probably into 2024, maybe into even 2025. But remember, I'm not a financial advisor, even if I want to be, even if you want me to be, even though my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in real estate in Texas. So guys, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't, shoot me a comment below. And just real quick, seriously, you guys like this video. I'm not joking. Like it. My likes are going down. Like the video, spread this message, help me grow. But let's jump into the article right now. And this will be linked in my description. Fortune charges is a subscription, but I find fortune is really good information as far as the housing market. And that's why I pay for a subscription. But the name of the article is the Fed's ongoing housing market reset sees buyer cancellation rate at one of the nation's largest home builders spike to a whopping 68% shocking. So the article goes on and talks about what Jerome Powell said in September. I'm, I'm glad they're bringing this up. Speaking to reporters in September, Fed Chair Jerome Powell was asked to clarify what he meant when he said spiking mortgage rates would cause a housing reset. The meaning, he said, was that the U.S. housing market would slip into a difficult correction. Do y'all really think that we're through a difficult correction? We're not. And it's evident in new construction. New home construction is evident. The, uh, the rental market is evident. We're going through a massive correction, plus the equity decline in such a short amount of time and, and metros on the year over year price decline list. It's so evident. We're going through the correction right now. Let's go on. When I say reset, I'm looking at a particular specific set of data. What I'm really saying is that we've had a time of red hot housing market all over the country where famously houses were selling to the first buyer at 10% above the ask, even before seeing the house. Huge problem. Guys, do not forget where we came from, right? If you don't think the housing market is going to crash, I mean, look at the progress that we've made in such a short amount of time. Do y'all remember people going over asking price, over appraisal value, the bidding wars? Shocking, right? That was so bad. For the longer term, what we need is supply and demand to get better aligned so that housing prices go up at a reasonable level and at reasonable pace and that people can afford houses again because right now you guys know people can't afford houses because it's still way unaffordable. Even with rates lower, it's way unaffordable, even with price drops. Probably in the housing market have to go through a correction to get back to that place, Powell said. But from a business cycle standpoint, this difficult housing correction should put the housing market back into a better place. And that's what we all want, including me. Of course, this so-called difficult housing correction has already arrived. Look no further than the latest earnings reports by KB Home, one of the nation's largest publicly traded home builders. So you guys, this was the very first primary residence that I owned was a brand new KB Home, which went into a foreclosure. On Wednesday, KB Home announced that its buyer cancellation rate in the fourth quarter of 2022 spiked to 68%. That's up from 35% in the third quarter of 2022 and just up from 13% in the fourth quarter of 2021. So it went from 13% cancellation rate to 68% year over year, right? So fourth quarter, unbelievable. How do you, how do you not talk about that, right? If you're talking about the housing market, you're forecasting, 
How do you leave out new construction? How do you leave out cancellation rates? I don't understand that. That is, that is eye popping, shocking. And honestly, fa- try to fathom that. Try to fathom from 13 to 68%. Unbelievable. Current conditions remain challenging. High mortgage rates and persistent inflation together with an uncertain economy have made home buyers more cautious since the middle of last year. As such, in the fourth quarter, we prioritize delivering our large backlog and protecting our high margins over taking steps to stimulate additional sales during the seasonally slower time frame. And remember, the buying incentives really didn't start until Q4 of 2022. So even with the buying incentives, listen, even with the buying incentives, 68 cancel, 68% cancellation rate, seriously, pause and think about that. Even with massive price cuts, still 68% cancellation rate and the rates are going down. Y'all see what I'm saying here? You've got to look at the whole picture, right? Look at the whole picture. Let's move on in the article. So let's visualize some of this data. This is KB Home, one of the largest home builders reports a 68% cancellation rate in Q4 of 2022. So this is KB right here. This is the cancellation rate, y'all. And really what they're trying to point out is even during the COVID recession lockdowns, okay? Even going through the COVID recession lockdowns, the cancellation rate was still lower. You guys, even during lockdowns, people freaking out, what's happening, what's happening? The cancellation rate was slightly over 40%. Do y'all see that right here? Slightly over 40%. Fast forward to right now, look at this. Look at, un, p- putting things in perspective, there is a huge, huge problem in new construction. They can't, they can't sell their houses. They got too much of it. There's too much inventory in new construction. Shocking, guys. Absolutely shocking. Normally, it's way down here under 20%. So normally, it's under 20%. It's three times higher than normal. Three times higher than normal in an environment with declining interest rates and overwhelming buying incentives. Still three times higher. Think about it. Think about it. Historically speaking, a 68% cancellation rate is off the charts. Even during the darkest days of the 2008 era crash, the average builder cancellation rate only reached, listen, 47%. During the last financial collapse, 47%. Right now it's 68%. What does that tell us about unaffordability? What does that tell us about house prices are still too high? What does that tell us, guys? It tells us that good things come to those of us who wait. Sorry about that. I got a little bit passionate on that last scene, but let's continue with the article. What's going on? Pressurized affordability, a three percentage point mortgage rate jump following a more than 40% run up in the U.S. home prices. And that's my sticking point. 40% run up in about two years. It's not going to work. It's not. We could talk about all the things that we want to talk about that there alone that's not going to work. That, that breaks every safeguard and fundamental. We can't have that. It destroys us. Case in point, look what's happening right now. That sent shockwaves through the U.S. housing market. Some buyers are canceling their contracts because they're afraid that home prices will fall further in 2023. Others have simply lost their mortgage el- eligibility in the face of 6% mortgage rates. Spiking cancellation, spiking cancellation rates put home builders in a pickle. The problem, builders, builders still have a tremendous amount of inventory, both single family and multifamily in the pipeline. The pandemic housing demand boom coupled with supply chain issues pushed the number of U.S. housing units under construction to a record all-time high, all-time record high in 2022. So just real quick, not only is the cancellation rate at a record high, so is new construction, like homes that are being built right now, historical. Y'all, y'all, I mean, this is going to be big. This is, this is already, Austin right now is already unraveling out of control. Over 20% decline in Austin. Think about it. Heading forward, builders will continue to turn to their housing downturn playbook to unwind the unsold inventory. They'll start by offering incentives like mortgage rate buy-downs, and if that doesn't work, then begin to mark down home prices until their unsold inventory has been moved. And unfortunately, what that does to any current owner is it locks them in the house. 
it locks them in the house because they're still part of that community. There's a whole bunch of houses that need to be sold and now the prices are going down significantly. So it's not fair to any current owner. Depending on market dynamics and backlog levels in each community, we are getting more aggressive with our pricing ahead of the spring selling season. In order to generate new orders at the same time, with the industry-wide deceleration in housing starts compared to a year ago, we are also pursuing reductions in direct construction cost and build times, which should help offset the impact of pricing adjustments we may take. So does that mean they're going to use less quality of materials and they're going to rush the home building process, right? To me, that's what that sounds. And to me, that's exactly what Lennar has been doing. And Lennar is the number two biggest new home builder in America. They have been ahead of all of this compared to other builders. They have slashed so much of the prices on their houses. They've been so aggressive in my local market here in Texas, Austin, Houston, right? Shocking stuff going on, guys. I mean, th this is great news. If you're like me on the sideline, <laughs> This is what we want, right? Th this is exactly what we want, right? So if you're like stressed out about the interest rates going down, just stay in the new home construction data, right? It, there's nothing but positive news for us. Let's move on. When it comes to cutting home prices, KB Home is treading lightly, and that's probably why they had a 68% cancellation rate. They should not have treaded lightly. They should have cut the price on their homes, and they probably wouldn't be in this mess. If word gets out, buyers already under contract could get frustrated and cancel their contracts. <laughs> that reason, that reason coupled with wanting to protect their comps is why builders prefer to offer incentives like mortgage rate buy downs rather than cut prices too much. And comps is what they need for the appraisers to appraise those homes properly for the lenders, right? So the safeguard is appraisals. And that's why they're worried about the comps. But a lot of manipulating was done, in my opinion, with comps. So, so this is very interesting because this shows the rate shock. I mean, this this is this is incredible. I mean, the shift in mortgage rates is is really quite shocking. Uh, it is shocking, you guys. This hurt us big time, and it, it really hurt investors, and especially hurt new builders and new construction industry. Real estate agents and builders alike are rooting for a loosening of financial conditions and a subsequent and a subsequent drop in mortgage rates. If mortgage rates fall on, say, favorable news on the inflation front, then affordability could gradually return to the market. Otherwise, as long as affordability remain pressurized, the U.S. housing market will likely remain in reset mode. But again, rates are double what they were at the end of 2021 and inventory is skyrocketing. So the rates don't need to be that high in order to have the same trends. Researcher, researchers at firms like Goldman Sachs and Moody Analytics aren't as optimistic when it comes to mortgage rates. Both firms expect mortgage rates to hover around 6% this year, and both firms expect U.S. home prices to continue to fall through 2024. The article concludes, Bank of America researchers think that the bottom in home builder stocks could be in the rear view mirror. Are you serious? Like this is so for some reason, home builder stocks right now have not plummeted. It may be because they have the collateral of the home, but I'm telling you guys, I have no idea why their stocks are high. 68% cancellation rate, historically too much inventory, headwinds in the future. How is their stocks still up? I don't get it, but let's finish reading this. Home builder stocks underperformed in 2022 as mortgage rates spiked to 7% from 3% and demand deterioration in the second half of the year. In 2023, we are cautious on housing demand, but we see more of a favorable setup for home builder stock performance for a few reasons. Crazy. Number one, home builder valuations are already pricing in weak demand and home price depreciation. Number two, Mortgage rates have declined from peak levels and are and are posed to move lower in 2023. Number three, we do not see material risk to book value. Most of the land on balance sheets was purchased prior to 2021, and we expect home price correction rather than a crash. So they're saying a correction is in between 10% and a crash is in between 15 to 20%. I have personally defined a crash as 15%. And we see that in multiple, multiple metros. And I'm not saying that 15% takes us down to pre-pandemic. I don't consider, you know, I don't have a requirement to hit pre-pandemic levels in order for the housing market to be considered a crash because think of all the people that bought in the last two years that are stuck and doomed. Just saying. 
Number four, builder margins will benefit from lower input cost, Bank of America researchers wrote on Wednesday. Bank of America reiterates a neutral rating for KB Home. We expect KB Home orders to remain under pressure with rising mortgage rates, but headwinds are likely already reflected in valuation with shares trading. I don't think so. I don't think so. In addition, we believe KBH has some cushion in its margins. They definitely have cushion in their margins. Am I right? Even as pricing declines, given 40% of its owned lots were contracted in 2019 and another 40% were contracted in 2020 prior to the run-up in land prices. Still, we believe that KBH has the highest risk of write-downs across our coverage given its high exposure to underperforming West Coast and Mountain West markets. So in conclusion, I believe in new construction. I already know it's already here right now. There's going to be insane, insane, insane buying incentives in 2023. And again, in order to really see that, you're going to need to be in an area where there's a lot of new construction. Now, I'm in Houston, Texas, so I have new construction everywhere. I've been taking you guys to the field, showing you hidden inventory, inventory under construction. I've been showing you blocks of housing that's been turned into rentals. I've been showing you guys the rental market meltdown. I mean, you guys, the more and more we go into 2023, the more opportunities that we will have to find the deal of our dreams. Now, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day today, and I hope you guys got some value, insights, and perspective in today's video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck, and I hope you win.